So in terms of each market sector, Airbus they've got it pretty much covered and even more so compared to Boeing. For example, in the long haul market they've got the A380 and the A350-1000, for the medium they have the A350-900 and the A330neos, for the short haul market they have the neoplanes and finally, which is a new avenue for the company, they've managed to penetrate into the regional market by the acquisition of Bombardier. Now the narrow body market is doing extremely well, so there's no need to give it much attention because the sales will inevitably come in the years going forward. So this is great news for Airbus, knowing that they have worthy products to satisfy demand in each of these sectors. But first and foremost, let's talk about their pride and jewel, the A380. Now, the plane entered into service almost 11 years ago, and it did gain traction somewhat throughout the years, but now the fate of the plane is very insecure. Currently, they can't find any airline who wants to buy it, and the planes are even being broken up and sold for parts. Now, Airbus still believes that the A380 may still be the future of aviation, and they're even willing to extend its production until 2029. Now, the hub and spoke model, which Airbus prefers, isn't going to evaporate from domestic travel anytime soon. But there are several signs that over time it may erode, and the fact of the matter is, is that smaller planes can fly longer distances and be far more economical. It's also a similar situation to the 747, and they both have three things in common. They can carry several hundred passengers, passenger volume demands that they fly to hubs rather than spokes, and they both are four-engine planes. Now, according to the studies done by Airbus, air travel is expected to increase by a considerable amount in the next decade. By their own calculations, there are 58 megacities with more than 50,000 long-haul daily passenger flights, and by 2036, Airbus expects that there will be 95 megacities. Now, airports will become more and more congested, and the plane's ability to deliver more passengers will be the key in alleviating this problem. So in the eyes of Airbus, demand is set to peak back up again in the next 10 to 15 years, and there will be a surge in demand for the plane once again. Now, it's a great thing to be optimistic and hope well for the future, but the A380 program is a race against time. They're currently hoping that China will lead a revival in orders once demand for long-haul planes pick up again. So guys, you've heard it yourself from the horse's mouth, that they're going to stick with the program for a bit longer, and they're hoping that the plane will come back to them very soon. Could we expect to see a new iteration of the A380? Well, I highly doubt it. I mean, if they didn't make the Neo version, even with Emirates pressurizing them, then I don't think they'll make a new version of the plane. But of course, that all comes down to if there's a huge demand by the airlines. Now, Airbus forecasts their demand over the next 20 years for 8,000 new twin owl planes. And the family that will be leading this charge will be the A350 family. So essentially, the A350 is a mid-sized plane which is used for long-haul flights, and it's definitely shaping the future of air travel. Now, the A350 family perfectly covers the 300 and 400 seat market segment, offering a long-range capability of around 8,000 nautical miles across the family. With the ultra-long-range version configured for the A350-900, it can offer the capability of flights up to 20 hours. Now, Airbus are very convinced that there will be further sales of the 1000, as airlines start to concentrate on replacing their larger wide bodies in the year 2020 up to 2023. Now, at one point, the plane was claimed as a competitor to the 787 Dreamliner, one of the workhorse aircraft of the skies today, alongside the Boeing 777 and the A380. But the question that we have to ask is, since there are so many 777s and A380s, is there enough space of the A350 to play around with? Um, well, maybe not. But the great news is, is that Airbus has 890 orders for the A350 placed by 41 customers, of which Qatar Airways is the largest order of 80 aircraft. But the way airlines are going at the moment, it seems like the plane is more of an alternative to the Boeing 777. Plenty of airlines have gone out of business for flying too much capacity, but in the current period, there is the inevitable post-peak cycle. Some airlines thought to be ideal for the 1000 have now become more suited to the 777X or even the older and cheaper model, the 777-300ER. Other markets could sustain the A350-1000, but many airlines are being conservative and downgrading their order to the smaller aircraft like the 900, 
and also align them to retain a wider city pair option. But there's no doubt about it though, that this is the flagship plane that Airbus will be carrying in the future. Now one area that Airbus are very interested in, and we could see them introducing it into future aircraft, is the concept of a laminar blade wing. Now this is essentially where the outer wings will be replaced with a special laminar section. We all know the higher the drag, the higher the fuel consumption. And the difference in drag between a laminar and turbulent flow is huge. So by changing the structure and the shape of the wing, the drug can be halved. Now for many years, Airbus and Boeing have experimented with a slightly different approach. Rather than designing a naturally laminar wing surface, this approach requires embedding a mesh with thousands of tiny holes in the wing surface, with differential pressure used to draw air into the laminar wing. Now Boeing in fact took the concept one step further with the Dreamliners, using a laminar flow control system in the leading edge of the vertical stabilizer. Now in theory it could work, but the execution of it is very difficult to achieve. But if it can be done, then a lot has to be gained. Now Airbus are expecting to conduct the first flight by the end of the year, and if the results gathered from the test are the same as Airbus have been expecting, then we could see mass production of this type being implemented into future aircraft. Now to lame passengers like ourselves, there will be much difference in terms of flight comfort or whatever, but where the gain will be made is in the operation saving for the airline. There's currently no timetable at this moment in time, but the technology could quickly move into industrial implementation if the blade experiment delivers the expected positive results, so keep your eyes out for that one. But essentially, the future actually lies in environmentally friendly planes, so the introduction of electric planes could soon become a reality. Now like hybrid cars, a hybrid electric airliner will be able to optimize power generation and usage in all phases of the flight particularly where extra thrust is required in takeoff and climb, with both the gas turbine and the batteries working together. Once the aircraft is in cruise level, the fuel efficiency of the gas turbines driving the electric motors will make more of a significant fuel beneficiency. Now Airbus have showcased their E-Fan X, which will enter commercial flight by 2030s with a 50 to 100 seater hybrid electric plane. Now Airbus believes that propulsion technology could help the aviation industry in achieving their goal of reducing carbon dioxide emissions by as much as 75% by the year 2050. Now there's also this concept plane in which passengers will be able to look through the transparent cabin. Now this is a very futuristic plane and is set to enter into service in 2050 where the plane mimics the efficiency of a bird. Now the plane would provide strength where needed and also allow the cabin to control the air temperature and it can become transparent giving amazing views. The cabin would also feature seats that would fit the passenger's body shape. So that's always great to know. Now Airbus have also said that passengers might be able to enjoy a game of virtual golf or take part in an interactive conference while the cabin identifies and responds to the traveler's need. But in essence, the plane will reduce fuel burn, emissions and waste by a considerable amount. So all in all, the future seems bright for the Airbus company, from the introduction of very fuel efficient planes to crazy concepts that will just blow your mind away. Now there's no doubt about it that the power battle between Boeing and Airbus will continue, each pushing each other to create better products and increase their market share. Now in terms of a brand new aircraft from Airbus, well, that doesn't seem like a possibility in the near future, because as same as Boeing, they'll be creating new iterations of their current designs and also delivering on the needs of their customers. So captains, that's all there is for me at this moment in time. A lot has been talked about in this video and I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about this. Leave your thoughts and your opinions in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, then give it a like and also consider subscribing guys and I hope to see you in the next one.